Hello, congregation, and uh, welcome to our uh, Ascension Day service and the message uh, for this Sunday, or for this Ascension Day. Uh, it is always the passage in Acts chapter 1 that we look at primarily on this day. And so let's dive right in and hear what Acts has to say, what the Dr. Luke shared with us through the book of Acts. We'll start right at the beginning of chapter one, in which Luke writes these words. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father has promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses throughout Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way. You have seen him go into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, this passage is so important and critical for our understanding of who Jesus is and of what the gospel means for us and what our call in response to that gospel is. It's all in here. This passage outlines it all. Listen, first of all, Paul, Luke starts off by saying, you know, what he had talked about before, all that Jesus, listen, all that Jesus began to do and teach. Notice here that Luke does not say all that Jesus taught. He says all that Jesus began to do and teach. And this is important because Luke is telling Theophilus and us that Jesus didn't stop teaching and doing with his death on the cross. He didn't stop teaching and doing with his resurrection either. In fact, Jesus didn't stop teaching and doing with his ascension into heaven either. This is very intentional and very critical. Luke is making it clear to Theophilus that Jesus is still teaching and doing. Even as Luke writes this book long after Jesus' ascension into heaven, even as we read this book right now, Jesus is still doing and teaching. And that alone is really important and critical. Our Lord is alive and well and in the world today. Remember the song, I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living no matter what people say. Jesus is alive and working and doing and teaching. 
Of course, we need to go on it, and, and Luke affirms that Jesus is indeed alive. He, he reiterates to Theophilus how Jesus gave all kinds of proofs that he was alive. He's not a ghost. He, he's not a phantom. He's not a hallucination or an imagination or a wishful thinking. Jesus is alive and not just alive in some spiritual, ethereal sort of sense, but no, Jesus is alive in a physical sense. Now, this is important on so many different levels. On one level, it is important because the, the Jews, the Pharisees especially, they taught the, the resurrection of the body. They taught that people would be resurrected physically. And Jesus, this is one of the areas where Jesus agrees with the Pharisees. He says, yeah, yeah. And here I am, the proof of that. We, in other words, were meant, are meant to be physical and spiritual beings. And so the fact that Jesus, our brother, is resurrected physically and is alive physically tells us what our future will be too. We will not simply live some ethereal life where we float around in the heavens playing harps on clouds and stuff like that. No, no, we are going to be real physical beings living with God, with our brother Christ forever. And so this is why it's important that Jesus not only rose from the dead, but he rose from the dead physically. Right, And he proves that to him, Luke says. And then he says, this is more important, or not more important as in more important, but another important thing that the, the apostles and all of us are going to inherit, receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And this is critical too. This is part of the reality that Jesus brings is that no longer will God and humanity be separated, but instead the Holy Spirit, God, one in three, three in one, will live and make his home with us. And so Jesus says, not only have I risen from the dead, not only am I physical and, and, and the firstborn example of what you will be like, but also God will come and live with you in the Holy Spirit. And that is just a foretaste of what glory divine we will see when we see him face to face when Christ returns, which brings us on because Jesus says, not only will the Holy Spirit come, but also, also, I myself will return. Now, he doesn't say that in so many words in this passage, but he does say it throughout the rest of the Gospels. But before we get there, First of all, we, we see that the, the disciples, they still don't quite get it, right? They, they say, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? They're still thinking in terms of a physical kingdom, an earthly kingdom. They're, they're hoping for and praying for a descendant of David. They were hoping it would be Jesus to come and sit on the throne of the actual kingdom of Israel, right? And Jesus says to them, look, it's, it's not for you to know the times or dates that that's going to happen. But instead, focus on the fact that the Holy Spirit is going to come and be with you. And then we get the call, right? We get the call, right? The Holy Spirit will come on you and you will be my witnesses throughout Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the rest of the world. And that is so important for a whole bunch of reasons. One is because witnesses who truly believe what they are, they have witnessed, it makes a difference in their lives. It changes them. That's true with negative things and with positive things. If you, heaven forbid, uh, witnessed a murder, it would change you. If you have witnessed your 
loved ones being abused, it changes you. But so too, when you witness amazing things, it makes a difference. I don't know how many of you remember the, the time when John Paul II, the Pope John Paul II, was shot at and, and he was wounded. And, and thankfully, he did not die. But later, he went and confronted his would-be assassin and forgave him. Do you remember that? If you don't, you should look it up, Google it, whatever. It is an amazing story. And those who witnessed that, they were changed. They saw an example of the power of forgiveness. And so too it is with Jesus, with his life and his death and his resurrection. When Jesus calls his disciples to be his witnesses and he empowers them with the Holy Spirit, it makes a difference. Their lives, they not only speak about what Jesus has done and who he is, but they live who Jesus is and what he has done. And that is true for us as well. We are his witnesses in that same way. That's our call. It makes a difference. It needs to make a difference. If it doesn't make a difference, then the question is whether or not you're actually a witness at all. And then the second thing that matters there in that passage is that it's not just being witnesses to Jerusalem or to the Jewish people, but it is witnesses even to the enemies of the Jew, the Samaritans, and even to the ends of the earth, the Gentiles, the Roman world, the, the people of India, the Chinese empire, the people in Ethiopia and the rest of Africa and all over Europe and North America and everywhere, South America, everywhere. The gospel was not for just one select people. And then we see Jesus taken up into heaven before their very eyes, and that matters too. It matters too because in that we see that Jesus, when he says that he is going to prepare a place for us, he is not lying. He is taken up before their very eyes. And they see him leave. And they know that the truth of what he has said all along has just been demonstrated in a dramatic and real way. And so the ascension matters because we see in it the proof, the reality, the truth of what Jesus has said all along. But then what comes after matters too. The angels who gather with them and say, why are you looking up into the heavens? <coughs> right? Jesus, who has been taken from you, will come back in the same way. Don't be afraid. Don't look like little lost puppy dogs staring at your master as he leaves. You have work to do. Go. Jesus is coming back. Right? Brothers and sisters, this is Ascension Day. And it is so essential for us. This little story alone carries so much of the gospel message that Christ came and taught and did all kinds of things, teaching us that God wanted restored, renewed re relationship with us, reconciled relationship with us, giving up his life for love of us, and then resurrecting, being resurrected from the dead and giving us the Holy Spirit and ascending into heaven. These things are important. And if they don't make a difference, then maybe we haven't realized how important they are. Or if we've forgotten how important they are, then now is the time to remember. Remember 
the astonishing, the wonderful, the incredible, the awesome reality that Jesus, the Son of God, came and became one of us and lived among us and walked among us and taught and did among us and he died and he rose again, human still and God still resurrected physically. He ascended into heaven, sent the Holy Spirit, always one of us, always God, bringing us into the family of God and making us one It's amazing. Brothers and sisters, this is Ascension Day. It is awesome and wonderful. Remember and do not forget. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you so very much that you sent your son, that he came and lived as one of us and taught us the way of love. To love you, O oh God, with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. And thank you that you sent your son to take away all our sins. And thank you that you sent your Holy Spirit to enable us ever more to live more and more in the way of love that you gave us to live. And thank you so much that your son ascended into heaven to prepare a place for us. And thank you so much that you have called us to be your witnesses. And thank you so much that someday we too will be resurrected in our new and glorified bodies, just like Jesus. Lord, help us to live in Ascension Day awe all of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.